folks, Joseph A. Sabori here, and I'm doing another movie review this week called Summer of 84. It's a story about four teenage boys who suspected that their next door neighbor might be a serial killer in suburban Oregon. And this is an independent film that I was very curious about because, granted, I did saw the trailer. Even though it may be predictable, but you know what? I actually wanted to check this out anyway to see how good it looks. It might be even better than, than one might suspect. But sometimes, you know, I do kind of wish they had a better trailer for the film. So that way it doesn't give away too much. So I'm going to try to do my best to not give it away. Because if you haven't seen it for yourself, um, just don't judge by what the trailer asks. I mean, see it for your own risk and see how you felt. Anyway, it stars Graham Bracheri, Judith Lewis, Caleb Embry, Corey Gruder Andrew, Tara Scopi, Rich Summer, Jason Gray Stanford, Shauna Johansson, J. Alex Brinson, Harrison Hold, Mark Brandon, Susie Cotillo, and William McDonald. It's written by Matt Leslie and Stephen J. Smith, and it's directed by free directors Francis uh, Sennard and Oak with Cell, along with Joanne Carl, and if you're familiar with those three, they happened to work on the movie Turbo Kid a few years ago, which I actually did enjoy. I mean, despite of its problems, the movie had, so I, you know, I give it a pass. But this might be even better. The movie begins set in the suburban town of Icewick, Oregon in the summer of 1984, starting in June, we meet a 15-year-old teenage boy named Davey, who's a paper boy going around the entire suburban town, you know, delivering newspapers. That is until he meets uh, the next-door neighbor named Mr. Mackey, who happens to be a policeman, and he's very friendly, too. So, uh, during that day, just when he was about to get his pay from him, um, he went inside his house, you know, just to move uh, a table inside. But then he begins to find out about the water heater, you know, making all these noises. And then he also found out that there's actually a dark room inside. This is where he takes all these photographs. So he's into photography as well. And yeah, with a dark red room, and it has all these photos around. So, yeah, he's a nice guy. I mean, he hangs around. He actually works with, with the police force, you know, just to see what's going on throughout the entire town. Anyway, Davey is very obsessed with conspiracy theories and tabloid mysteries. I mean, this is why he, he hangs all these, uh, these cut-out uh, tabloids and hanged it onto the wall of his room. Uh, he does live with his father and his mom. His father, of course, works uh, as a cameraman at a local television station. Um, his mom just does uh, what she usually does, you know, just, you know, she's nice, you know, she's trying to see how Davey's doing and everything, so nothing much to say. And anyway, Davey also hangs out with three guys, uh, a fat guy named Woody, a tough guy with, with a black leather jacket named Eats, and a whiz kid named Curtis. They hang around inside his room, you know, just going around looking at some dirty magazines you know, of, of new girls, and they're, and they're always talking dirty all the time. That is until they spotted uh, the next door girl, Nikki Kasazba. 
Yeah, she's very cute, attractive, and yes, pretty sexy. Um, which, they actually spotted her inside a, um, somewhere in a skating rink. Um, also has a bowling alley, I believe, and all this other stuff. They even have arcade games. There's even a polybus that's out of order, <laughs> uh, as you may have seen. While the, the song Cruel Summer is being played in the background, yeah, that's a song by Bernardo Rambo. The same song that you heard in the original Karate Kid. Yeah. Also from that same year, 1984. <laughs> so there's a lot of 80s nostalgia in there. There's a serial killer on the loose throughout the entire area that may be believed that he's responsible for killing 13 kids throughout the entire region over the past few months. So they were hoping that it might actually hit in that same suburban town. So Davy suddenly suspects that the next door neighbor might be a serial killer. And this is exactly why he's beginning to find out that, that this guy's been hiding something. So he teams up with the guys, you know, trying to search you know, playing manhunt, you know, they, they bring in their walkie-talkies, including the G.I. Joe ones. They started looking all the way throughout the, the trash cans to see if there's something that's inside. Or they even try to find a an MTV t-shirt that's coming from a kid who actually wore it, but it's left somewhere in, in the the shelf. Yeah, where all his garden tools are. Yeah, because he does a lot of gardening. He, he always, uh, you know, plants something. He, you know, he buys a lot of that to, to plant his uh, garden. Everything. So. so it leads to all these twists and turns to begin to suspect how this movie goes, as it follows. And next thing you know, you never know what's going to happen next the end of the movie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I gotta say, this movie was pretty well done. I mean, this is an independent thriller. Just came out um, this year, in uh, early August. Uh, it's being played at selected cities, whatever it's playing at, but I had a chance to watch it online because it's available and I gotta say it's uh, very well done in fact it's a lot better than what the trailer uh, suggested it yeah because sometimes I wish movies like this had a better trailer so it, it's better than what you expect uh, definitely has an 80s nostalgic feel to it and it really shows uh, I kinda wish they had went for like maybe a grainy texture to make it look like this movie was shot on film instead of being digital, but that's always the case. Um, but it does feel like an actual 80s movie because um, they put in a lot of um, pop culture references in there. Like they they put in an old Pepsi logo on one of them. They even had a, the the Pepsi free bottles too. Uh, There's some actually interesting moments too between the you know Davy and Nikki you know where they actually s suddenly spied on her and and she was about to take her off her her clothes and I know it, we, we've seen that a lot in other films but they had to go for that too until she came over she spotted uh, Davy so you know they were talking you know they, they started to fall in love with each other and the teenage boys were very excited they got a chance. Only leads to what was going on involving the, the mystery of, of a serial killer that's on the loose. Especially when we're seeing a lot of uh, missing boys around. I mean, he begins to spot this from a milk carton. This is where he shows the picture of, of the, the missing boy. So they begin to see some suspicion. Uh, it has some interesting... Um, Synthesizers, all done by 
the Matos, yes, these are the same composers who also compose uh, for the movie uh, Turbo Kid. So it's good to see that they really went for that vibe of of 80s uh, synthesizers and, and all of that. And so I guess in a way, this is sort of like a cross between the the Burbs uh, meets uh, Rear Window. And I know there's other films that follow, like, in, in the vein of Stranger Things, yeah, the TV show that's on Netflix, which I really love. And even has, um, you know, Disturbia in there, too, in the mix. Yeah, because that's the one with Charlotte Buff. It was very chilling and very suspenseful. I didn't get disappointed at all, which I'm happy. And this might be their best film that they ever did. And so far, so good. So I guess to me, um, I really enjoyed it. And, and the cast plays it well. I mean, not a bad performance whatsoever, so that's a good sign. I mean, I'm always afraid that this was exactly what's going to happen. Like, geez, you know, why, why do we have to always get a lot of bad actors these days? in horror movies but they're well written well there are a few jump scares uh, in between which is really annoying these days in horror f movies but at least they didn't went there too much but that's just the idea why they always do this uh, in other modern day horror films and I know in recent years we have to go for that but this is pretty well done. It's what I suspected. It's done in Canada. It's very dark. Has a great feel to it. Great atmosphere. An 80's nostalgia. So it works. It really does. In fact, um, I really love it. If you haven't seen the movie, try your best to check this movie out. You won't be disappointed. It's better than the trailer suggested it. In fact, watch it for your own risk. So anyway, that's Summer of 84, and I give the film 5 stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.